this module, you will discover that you know a lot more about solving more complicated linear equations than you think. In the previous module, you learned how to solve simple linear equations. You'll recall it was mostly a matter of getting the variables, here it's the x's, all on one side and everything else on the other side. And then we finished up rather quickly after that. If you have questions about how we did that, take another look at the simple linear equation module because now we're going to look at harder equations. Don't let these examples frighten you. We'll approach them in the same simple way that we have before. In fact, we'll use exactly the same two basic rules we applied to simple equations. We use these rules to achieve one really important thing. Get the variable on one side all by itself. How? First, add or subtract to move whole terms. And then, multiply or divide to remove any numbers that are still on the same side as the variable. Ready to tackle our harder example? Don't panic. Just use what you already know and focus on one step at a time. What will you simplify first? That's right, we multiply out each of the parentheses. Be very careful about the positive and negative signs. Notice in the middle parentheses that a positive 12 results from multiplying two negatives. We look for like terms. We combine them. And now we're ready to move all the x terms to one side and the numbers to the other. Just for review, we'll demonstrate every step. To move the negative 7x to the left side, we add a positive 7x to both sides. Negative 7x and positive 7x disappear on the right. Then we work to move the positive 9 from the left to the right side by adding a negative 9 to both sides. The positive 9 and negative 9 disappear on the left, just as we intended, leaving a negative 9 on the right. Notice that this is exactly the same as simply moving a term from one side to the other and changing its sign. It's okay to think of it that way when you write out the steps to solve a problem. And this is what it gave us. We combine like terms And then we want to get down to what just 1x equals. So we divide both sides of the equation by 2. Remember our rule, it's always okay to divide or multiply both sides by the same number. We now see that x equals 13. Simple enough? It is if you use what you know and take one step at a time. Here's another example. Looks tough, but you can do it by simplifying step by step. Pause the program and try it now. When you've got it, select play and we'll compare our answers. How did you do? Let's work it out step by step. Start by multiplying out the parentheses. And then combining like terms. Okay so far? At this point we have a choice to move all the y terms to the left and all the numbers to the right or just the opposite. Either one is okay. The equations we get will look different for a while but they'll both give us the same answers. I decide to put all the y's in the left so I move 5y by subtracting 5y from both sides. The result? 
positive 5y disappears on the right and a negative 5y appears on the left. I want all the numbers on the right, so I subtract 29 from both sides. Positive 29 disappears on the left and, sound familiar, a negative 29 appears on the right. Happens every time. Next, we combine like terms. And that just leaves the task of simplifying minus 12y down to just 1y. How? Divide both sides by negative 12. The negative 12's cancel, leaving 1y equal to negative 18 divided by negative 12. Negative divided by negative gives us a positive. And we can reduce that to its lowest terms, 3 over 2, which is the same as 1 and a half, but there's no need to write the mixed fraction unless you want to. Let's go back to the point when we were deciding which side to put all our y terms on. If you put all of your y's on the right side, what would happen? Let's take a quick look. Adding 7y to both sides gives us positive 7y on the right. Subtracting 11 from both sides gives us a negative 11 on the left. We combine like terms and end up with an equation like the one we got the other way, but without all those negative signs on both sides. What's the final result after we divide both sides by 12 to get down to just plain y? We started with the same problem and got the same answer. but the two results end with the y's on opposite sides of the equal sign, simply because that's where we choose to isolate y. Stop and think about that. Does it make any difference which direction you read an equation? No, it doesn't, because the two sides are equal. If 3 halves are equal to y, then you can be certain that y is equal to 3 halves. Whichever way you wrote your answer, you can check it. How? by substitution. We saw that earlier. If y equals 3 halves, you can take the original equation and rewrite it. But every time you see a y, you write 3 halves instead. Then you work out the arithmetic step by step. And obviously, you have to end up with the same number on the left and on the right. They're equal. Go ahead and try it. Pause the program and work out all those fractions. Click play again when you have an answer. Do you agree? Now that we've had some practice using fractions again, using them to help simplify equations, let's look at equations that already start with fractions in them. Work on this equation requires that we know how to find the LCD the lowest common denominator of 4 and 6. That's the smallest number that can be divided evenly by both 4 and 6. Do you remember how to find the LCD? You will need to use a skill from arithmetic, factoring numbers. First, find the prime factors, and find the maximum number of times a factor occurs in any one case. In the case of 4, 2 occurs twice. In the case of 6, 2 occurs only once, so twice is the maximum for 2. We will use 2 twice. The factor 3 occurs only once, so we use 2 twice and 3 once and multiply them together to get 12, and that's the LCD of 4 and 6. 12 is the smallest number that can be divided evenly by both 4 and 6. If you need more review on factors, dig out your old arithmetic book before we go any farther. Now we're ready to deal with x over 4 and 5x over 6. We can solve the equation if we can just get rid of those fractions. How? By using that magic number, our lowest common denominator, 12. We multiply both sides of the equation by 12. The right-hand side is easy. 12 times 1 is 12. On the left side, we simplify the parentheses first by multiplying each term inside by 12. Now we're free to cancel within each term. 4 goes evenly into 12, and 6 goes evenly into 12. 
Why did that work so well? Because that's why we chose 12 in the first place. It's the LCD of 4 and 6. And suddenly, no more fractions. They're gone, thanks to the magic of that lowest common denominator. If that all makes sense, let's finish simplifying. We combine like terms to get 13x equals 12. And then, to get 1x on the left, we divide both sides by 13. And our answer is x equals 12 over 13. 12 thirteenths cannot be reduced any further, so that's the solution. Solving equations with fractions isn't hard if we remember our trick. Start by finding the lowest common denominator, the LCD. How do we find the LCD? By factoring. Try it now on this one. Pause the program. And when you have an answer, click play again, and we will compare our steps to a solution. This is a tough one, but it's easy to get started. I see the two denominators, 4 and 5, and look for the magic number, the lowest common denominator. I use the prime factors of 4 and 5 to find that the LCD is 20. So what do I do next? I multiply both sides of the equation by 20. I make sure that every term on the left and right is multiplied by 20. I can now do some canceling with the 4 and 5 because I know they have to go evenly into 20. 20 is their LCD. Like magic, the fractions disappear and leave us something easier to work with. From here, it gets easy. First, combine like terms. Next, leave the 35a by itself on the left by adding 30 to both sides so that positive 30 appears on the right and the negative 30 disappears on the left. Then, get rid of the 35 on the left, leaving just 1a by dividing both sides by 35. And we have our answer. How do we make solving these hard fraction problems easy? The secret is finding the lowest common denominator and using it to get rid of the fractions. But the other trick, the one that really helps, is to do lots of problems. So if you got our sample problem right, you are off to a great start. Try your new skill and some more problems. If you got that one wrong, well, Tackle more problems until you understand how to work the magic and get them right. Use what you know, do one step at a time, and you'll do fine.